are at stack again. A lot of people ask me the question, what happens when it's raining? What do I do about all this keeping fit and running and walking up the downs? Well, you can see it is now raining. So George, keep the camera equipment very dry. Stack Klusky, Serious Riders Guild, off on my treks again and talking to yourself. And thank you very much for looking in on what I call this rubbish. But I do feel it helps an awful lot of people in the music industry. I had a nice email from Denny in Pomoy in County Cork, County Cork in Ireland. And he starts off by saying, and I'll just put the glasses on here, and by the way, I had Optical Express laser treatment on my eyes to give me 20-20 vision in work. So I'll be very careful about that. Still have to wear glasses for reading. So then he says, just stop for a minute and just read this. They say procrastination is the thief of time. And he goes along about wanting to make an album of 10 tracks by the time of his 60th birthday. And now he's five years into that. And still there's no good schedule. So what's the schedule for writing a lot of songs and recording a lot of songs? It says he uses band in the box. I'll have a few things to say about that in a minute. Is that accepted industry standard? He had a novelty track published. Published. Don't know what he means by published. I should imagine that just means published. I doubt if anybody has listened to it, uh, Denny. But well, there we are. And he's given me the link. That's fine. So what I said was... Off we go again. It depends on what I'm doing as regards my schedule. I write a lot, as you know, as in books. I write a lot of music books, music courses, that sort of thing. But when I'm writing in that fashion, I have a schedule where I write from four o'clock until seven o'clock every day. And that's without fail. I have a system for that, which you may find interesting if you're into writing books. And I always say, never write a book without selling it first. That's the magic if you're doing it on eBay, on, on, on the net, then test it first. Test it, see does it sell, see do people like it before you then commit yourself to the full deal of publishing. That well, sorry for that little blip. As I said yesterday, <coughs> it was raining. And I asked George, our cameraman, who's manfully walking in front of me. Actual fact, I tell you a little secret. He's got a camera on his back. Very clever idea. But we said the uh, camera might get wet. And it did. No damage caused. We're okay. So let's continue on. I got up to the stage yesterday of saying that I had a message asking about a way of writing, a way of recording to get 10 say 10, 12, 14, 16 tracks done. And it can take, some of the big boys can take six months, a year, two years in Mustique or someplace like that. Wonderful, Barbados recording. For I said to our serious writer skill friend, the way I work is I do it in blocks of four. And I would have to give another little tip or an insight here. I always consider that a recording studio is a recording studio, not a writing studio or a rehearsal studio. And it's nice, I think, for some people to have the luxury of treating a 300 pounds an hour studio as a writing studio or a rehearsal studio. But I suppose I could do that, but I don't. It's a recording studio. So all my writing and rehearsal is usually done elsewhere. I do everything in blocks of four. I consider that to be the most efficient way of working because I do figure that you've got eight or 10 or 12 tracks going at the same time. Your brain can go into overload. Four is nice for me. I like to lay down the tracks. 
I'll get into the band box in a minute, lay down the tracks, and then I like to put the lead voice on first, and then put all the harmony voices. And as you'll know if you've followed me at all through the years, I'm a great man for harmonies, vocal arrangement as I say, the secret to hit records, the biggest secret, the most important secret, the one that nobody will ever tell you, and sadly you probably won't find out for yourself. But well, listen to any hit record, and there's loads and loads and loads of vocal arrangement. So, put down the guide voice first, then put the vocal arrangement on, then do all the charting up, the finishing off, the bits and pieces, the gloss as I say, the frame around the picture, and then the lead vocalist goes in, could be yourself, and you put the definitive lead vocal on. The idea on that is that the vocalist will hear everything in place and it will be the best that the track will ever be. So it's like almost singing to a backtrack on stage and the vocalist will give his or her best performance. And I would suggest four at a time, get the four done to that stage and then in a separate session altogether, I take possibly a day to mix each track. And then mixing, my suggestion is to use as much outboard equipment as you can, compressors, limiters, particularly effects. I find that outboard effects are far, far better, far bigger in size somehow or other than the ones on the computer and on Pro Tools. So that's what I do. Use all the outboard effects. Echoes, reverbs, flangers. I'll put the name of a bit of equipment down below. I'm sure I've got it right. The Eventide Harmonizer. I think it's the SH3000. Again, it's a secret that every major producer in the world uses. You'll recognize the sound on every hit record, practically every hit, hit record that you hear. So there we are, four at a time. And get them finished up to two track stereo. Then do two track stereo, what I call a full mix. And then do a back track, which you can use for television or for special shows. Where it's everything but the lead vocal. And then I'll do another mix, which is the lead vocal off, drums off, and all the major instruments that you'll be using on stage. So that's what I call an added instruments track. Very important. And that's about it. And always store the results very carefully because you don't know when a television company's gonna get in touch with you with a particular request for a particular mix for a particular show. It could be anything, it could be a keyboards only mix. So there we are, four tracks. He also asked me a little bit about what's the basic requirements for the studio to do that in. And I said to him, you know, band in a box really is what it sounds like. It's almost a toy bit of kit. Okay, you can get some decent results. But if you want to do it properly, Pro Tools. I keep repeating that and repeating that until I'm blue in the face. I know very few people listen to me, but all the big boys do. <laughs> They're not like me, they don't spell it like I do. Pro Tools, it's the only bit of kit to use. And all the onboard stuff that you get with it, which is free with Pro Tools. Pro Tools, then you need Red 100, which I'll put a, a link to on the screen. Red 100, which is a vocal enhancement, goes around the microphone, so it cleans up the acoustics in your studio. And even if you've got fabulous acoustics like I have, it will give you even better acoustics. That's the microphone. Mixing desk. If you go down that route, I do. I've got two mixing desks in tandem. 
working together. Gives me a lot of outboard effects. What else is there? Oh yeah, Yamaha NS10 monitors. Absolutely de rigueur, you gotta have them. Look at the photograph of any major producer, writer, singer in the world working in a studio. You will see NS10 speakers there, the little ones with the white speakers. You will know them. What else is there? Biggest amplifier you can get to power those NS10s. Good acoustics in the room. Most important thing, right from the start, proper dead acoustics. That's what you want. And that's about it to listen to. You may go mad and have a proper pair of big studios. I've got four separate listening systems in my studio. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed this. A bit long this week. What? I'm sure you got a lot out of it. I enjoy doing this. You are the light of my life. You know that. I enjoy people listening to me with this, as I call it, rubbish. See you next week. This is Deck. Bye. Look at that wood. Isn't that wood lovely? I think I might go for a walk in there one day. Shall I? Okay, bye.